Hello and welcome to my Astronomy Nights, I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at Messier 33, the Great Andromeda Galaxy. Now M33 of the Andromeda Galaxy is located within its namesake constellation of Andromeda and it's the largest and closest spiral galaxy to us and it's also the largest member of that local group of galaxies which includes the Milky Way and Messier 33. Now this one is technically circumpolar from my location but it does really skirt that northern horizon in say late April, it's only about 5 degrees up. But once you get past the summer solstice it works its way really high really quickly in the eastern sky. So from August right through until the end of January it's really well placed for observing. Now it's got a really good position in the south throughout the winter months so let's take a look and see how we can track this one down. So going into the winter months Andromeda is due south around 8pm and then by the time we go into the new year at the start of January it's due south just as the sun is setting around 6pm or so. Now to locate it we'll be looking for that large square of Pegasus and we're looking for the northeastern star which is Alpha Rats or Alpha Andromedae and we're going to work our way to the east 14 degrees to find the beta star of Andromeda, which is Merak and then the Andromeda galaxy itself is 7 degrees north of that. Now if you have really dark skies you'll be able to pick it up already but if you can't you can use that little line of three stars which is Merak, Mu and New Andromedae and then the galaxy is just to the northwest of New about a degree or so you'll pick up that nucleus of the galaxy with your naked eye. Now it shows up really well in binoculars and any low power so you should be able to pick it up in any finder scope or any binoculars that you have and then you'll be able to get your telescope straight onto it. M31 is a wonderful large spiral galaxy that's close to us. It sits at 2.5 million light years and it has a diameter of 150 million light years. It's all tilted in a 77 degree orientation and this translates to that really large 3 by 1 degree uh, elliptical shape that's on our night sky which is several times the size of a full moon. This was added to Messier's list as Messier 31 but it's been known since antiquity and it was described in Al Sufi's book of fixed stars as being a faint cloud. Now the first telescopic observation of this was by Simon Marius and he had a wonderful description of it saying it was reminiscent of the flame of a candle through horn. Now it's only been known to be a galaxy for the last 100 years or so when Hubble was doing his project on the Cepheid variables in the Mount Wilson Observatory. So up until that point it was also always known as the Great Nebula of Andromeda or in Andromeda. So it's great that we have the advantage of that knowledge and knowing that we're observing this massive spiral galaxy in our night sky rather than a diffuse faint um, nebula within our galaxy. So the Andromeda galaxy is the largest member of that local group of galaxies including our own Milky Way and M33 the Triangulum galaxy makes up those large three members of that local group. Now when you're observing the Andromeda galaxy, if you go the opposite side of Merak, you can see M33 there with a pair of binoculars and then you're looking within the local group of galaxies in that observation. In real terms, that 14 degrees of the night sky is about 750 million light years between M33 and M31 and then the Milky Way is about two and a half million light years away from those. So you can just picture that large isosceles triangle within that local group of galaxies. So for my next video I'm going to look at those satellite galaxies of the Andromeda Galaxy which is M32, NGC 205 or uh, Messier 110 and then across in Cassiopeia you have NGC 147 and NGC 185. Also Messier 33 itself is thought to be a satellite galaxy of Messier 31 so I'll look at that in the next video. So within the Andromeda Galaxy then you have NGC 206 which is an OB association star cloud and this is a fantastic region to look for. It's in the southwest and it shows up within that arm as that bright kind of mottled region and you're looking at a giant star cloud within the galaxy of Andromeda. This was discovered by William Herschel when he thought it was all a nebula so this was just a brighter part of the nebula to him. But we know that it's a large region that was a huge amount of star activity about 30 million years ago. And this is a wonderful little region to focus on because when you're editing your photo you can bring out the detail in that little star forming region of the galaxy. It shows up really nicely as well when you're observing it as that bright region as well to the south of the core and it makes kind of a, a right angle with the two satellite galaxies of M110 and M32. 
So another really interesting target in Andromeda is its globular clusters, and the brightest of which is my L2. This is a giant globular cluster that's more luminous than Omega Centauri with about 300,000 stars. It's even suggested that it is the remnant of a, a dwarf galaxy that has been stripped by Andromeda, and it's thought that it may have a black hole at the center of it. Now to observe it, you're looking at the southwest of Andromeda. It's really stellar from our point of view, but in, in reality, it looks quite like um, Messier 13, the Hercules cluster, with those two little stars sitting side by side. Um, I'll talk about observing it later in the video, but this is a really interesting target if you have the aperture to track it down. So to get the data from my image of the Andromeda Galaxy, I used my 82mm refractor, the Evolux 82ED, and I had my QHY monocamera attached with RGB filters. This was one of those targets I had in mind when I was picking up this telescope, along with say the Orion Nebula and the Rosette Nebula, but I also wanted to have a refractor that I could still use pretty well for observing, so I settled on the 82mm and it fits it quite well. It's a tight frame for it, but you can get those two satellite galaxies along with it, and it shows up really nice, those um, dark dust lanes that are on the near side of the galaxy. I'm really happy with this image. Uh, it took a while to get onto this target, because um, I'm looking over my house on the east, so I had to wait till it came a bit more closer to the south and was up away from the heat of the, the roof of the house, and then I was able to get a really nice image on it. So I was waiting into the Christmas. I might put more data on it if I get a chance, but Orion is coming around and it's getting really tempting to just go straight onto the Orion Nebula or the Rosette Nebula. So I'll see if, if I get a night where it's in a good position early on, I think I'll put a little bit more data into this one, even if I don't add it until a, a rainy night in the new year. So to observe the Andromeda Galaxy, I was using my 12 inch uh, last month primarily for this video. I was going for the couple of targets around it and I was looking at the satellite galaxies, but I have observed it in the past with my eight inch and with my smaller fracture and binoculars and the naked eye. But my favorite observation of the galaxy as a whole is with my eight inch Dobsonian. I think it's just wonderfully frames within my 32 millimeter wide field eyepiece and it, it gives you that detail in the dust lanes, along with getting most of the structure of the galaxy and its satellite galaxies M32 and M110. Uh, so I was primarily using my 12 inch Dobsonian to look for Myal 2, that small globular cluster that's available to us. It's quite faint, it's magnitude 13.8, but it's well worth looking for if you have a bit of aperture. It's quite an interesting target to look for. You spend most of the time just trying to confirm that you're looking at the globular cluster, not a star, which is the trickiest part. But it's fascinating to look at something that's more luminous than any of the Milky Way's globular clusters, but just so far away. And then in fact, it's really reminiscent of M13. So you can kind of compare them when you see the satellite images or the small little images there's the two tiny little stars beside it but it's actually this giant um uh, globular cluster with about 300,000 stars so it's a wonderful object to track down if you have the aperture to go for it so for my observing sessions on m31 i was primarily using my 12 inch dobsonian there last month and i was trying to find a good view of the satellite galaxies uh, my l2 the globular cluster and that uh, star cloud in the southwest ngc 206. Uh, i find with the 12 inch you can get some really good detail out of those dust lanes that run through it from um say northwest to southeast and it has that really bright core so if you spend a little time working your way past the core and move and say the eyepiece across the full length of andromeda you'll tease out those dust lanes because there's there's like seven arms in the galaxy but we can really just see maybe two or three of them on a good night and if you follow those dust lanes and track them down long you'll get as far as ngc 206 that lovely star cloud a uh, star forming region in the south um, east of the galaxy. It's a fantastic little um, target to look for. It shows up really well because it's against that kind of the dusty part of the arms of Andromeda, those, those kind of distinctive arms. So you're looking to see those little, it's like a little mottled patch, almost like um, a really distant open cluster. 
it has that kind of a mottled look to it. It's very reminiscent of the Whale Galaxy, the star forming region in the Whale Galaxy uh, NGC 4631. Now Andromeda has a lovely pair of close satellite galaxies to it. It has um, M32, which is that really tight elliptical galaxy that's right, right in near the core. And it looks like a, a like a blown out star when you're observing it, but it has that like a nice little haze around it, but an extremely bright core. And then um, uh, NGC 205, then or Messier um, 110, as it's known, is that lovely elliptical galaxy then on the opposite side, which has a, a nice soft core to it, but it has it's quite diffuse and quite large. I think if this was elsewhere in the sky, it would be known because it's such a large galaxy. So all in all, the Andromeda Galaxy is probably the most fantastic galaxy to observe in the night sky. The fact you can see it with your naked eye, your binoculars, or you can take images with a, a, a camera lens or with your telescope, it just makes it a really accessible object. And it's quite, um, it's quite forgiving as well. You can take a really early on project on this with your camera or with your telescope and see how you get on. It's, the only thing it is is that it's really large. So if you have some, if you have a, a bit of a focal length on your telescope, say above say 500 millimeters, you'll be kind of focused more on the core of it. But it's always nice to try a photo when you're starting out. And this is a good project along with say the Orion Nebula. Now observing this one is just wonderful. It's got some really good dust lanes and trying to tease out those different arms in the galaxy is fantastic. And the fact it has those two little tight satellite galaxies of M32 and M101 as it's known, it just makes it a really fun part of the sky to observe over a few nights and with different size focal length telescopes. I was using my 12, I've used my eight on it and my wide field refractor and it's just a wonderful thing to observe. So do let me know in the comments if you've been observing Andromeda or if you plan to observe it over the winter. And until next time, clear skies.